Can you imagine what would happen if the corn we grow are all eaten up by insects? We will not have enough food for everybody in the world. But not to worry, many crops including corn have been genetically modified to make them resistant to insects. But is increasing food supply the only benefit that genetically modified organisms, or GMO, have? And will the development of GMO result in any problems? As the global population continues to increase, genetic engineering has been used to develop GMOs to ensure food security. Before genetic engineering, selective breeding and artificial selection were used to enhance crop growth. As discussed in the breeding video, selective breeding involves the selection of organisms exhibiting desirable traits and breeding them. However, such methods are restricted to organisms of the same species. This means you cannot attempt to breed a corn and an orange because the genetic basis is different. Now, with advancements in biotechnology, we can expand the possibilities of modification. We can genetically modify food by selecting genes that confer desirable traits and insert them into other organisms in hopes that they may exhibit the desirable traits as well. In this case, the need for a compatible genetic basis may not be necessary. When we think about GMO, the first thing that comes to mind are usually agricultural plants. For example, the GM tomato flavor saver has a longer shelf life because the function of the gene responsible for food softening and spoilage has been silenced. The GM tomatoes were really successful in the mid-90s in Great Britain. However, it has since been withdrawn from the market despite the positive effect on its shelf life as the modification led to public concerns over unforeseen health consequences. Currently, scientists are working on other possible modifications to tomatoes, such as resistance to pests, fungi, and viruses. We can even enhance the nutritional content of foods, as seen from GM golden rice. Golden rice contains beta-carotene, a precursor to vitamin A. After consumption of this rice, Intestinal enzymes will cleave beta-carotene to yield vitamin A. Golden rice can produce high levels of beta-carotene due to insertion of a gene from a daffodil plant and a soil bacteria. Such modifications were done due to vitamin A deficiency in developing nations. Apart from plants, we also have genetically modified animals. The GM Atlantic salmon, AccuAdvantage salmon, is larger compared to their non-GM counterparts. They have been genetically engineered by inserting a growth hormone gene from a Pacific Chinook salmon and a promoter from an ocean pout. The production of genetically modified organisms has allowed us to increase both the quantity and quality of food. However, the benefits are not just limited to agriculture and food. GMO has contributed to the medical field too. As discussed in the Xenograph video, organs that are transplanted from pigs into humans might face organ rejection. However, by genetically modifying pigs, we are able to grow organs that will not be rejected by the human body. This has helped us alleviate the problem of organ shortage. Other than genetically modifying animals and plants, we have also genetically modified microorganisms. For example, the human insulin gene has been inserted into bacteria. These bacteria can then produce insulin, which is used for the treatment of diabetes. This will be discussed further in the biofarming video. Even though GMOs have provided valuable benefits to us, there is still resistance to GMO due to its potential risks. Firstly, there are unforeseen health risks. It has been found that some lab rats fed with GM foods showed indication of liver damage. Furthermore, there might be unintentional exposure to allergens, resulting in the development of allergies. For instance, the transfer of genes from a bacteria to a soy plant may cause allergic reactions upon consumption. At the moment, there are no reports of serious allergies. Also, GMO may result in the development of antibiotic resistance in gastrointestinal microbes should GMO exhibiting antibiotic resistance transfer these genes to gut microbes. 
this would make infections harder to treat. Ecological imbalances may also result due to the introduction of genetically modified organisms into nature. These superior organisms will outgrow and compete with unmodified organisms. One such superior organism is the superweed, which is caused by the transfer of a herbicide-resistant gene from a GM crop to a wild weed. Lastly, there are ethical concerns. By genetically modifying organisms, scientists are seen to be playing God as these organisms are unnatural. The rich variety of uses for GMOs provides valuable benefits to us, but many also worry about potential risks. Although supporters argue that some of these risks can be resolved with stringent checks and testing, there are no solutions to the ethical problems, and not every risk can be foreseen and checked. So, what is your take on GMOs?